The stakes at this year's COP being held in Egypt couldn't be any higher. The summit's going to be a test really of how willing governments are to deal with the growing climate impacts that we're seeing. The Egyptian presidency has made it very clear that it wants to focus on the implementation of the wide range of promises made since the 2015 Paris Accord. So that includes efforts to reduce emissions, adapt to climate change and provide money to help the most vulnerable countries do both of those things. A topic that is not going to be high on the agenda is peace and security, even though climate and violent conflict can sometimes be closely interlinked in parts of the world. Now, our analysis at Crisis Group shows that countries experiencing conflict and climate change receive about a third of the amount of financing per capita than those at peace. And there's an even wider gap for countries with the most intense conflicts. This trend is especially true for Africa. The continent is already dealing with the consequences of climate change in many regions and facing significant barriers to climate finance too. Now, although there are a number of side events at COP where peace and security will be discussed, our research shows on the Horn of Africa why it should still factor in the main agenda conversations in Egypt. So for example, in, in Kenya, four consecutive years of failed rains appear to be amplifying ethnic tensions between herders, between herders and farmers, and landowners all jostling for access to land and water, which has become scarcer because of the drought. In South Sudan, we see erratic rainfall and extreme flooding, driving herders south into the equatorial region, heightening intercommunal frictions and increasing the risk of violence there too. And in Somalia, where I spent part of September speaking to people displaced by drought and also conflict, we have about 7.8 million people who are suffering from hunger. And the state is battling, along with clan militia and some international forces, a strong Islamist insurgency. And Al-Shabaab itself is using its propaganda machine to imply that it's stepping in uh, instead of the government to provide services for drought stricken areas and in, in the rural parts of the country. And it's also taking control of water points and using drought and floods as a punitive measure against populations, people who are rising up against it, sometimes destroying water points or even poisoning wells too. So our message at COP27 is that delegates need to take account of conflict dynamics and ensure climate financing mechanisms are conflict sensitive. Climate adaptation can't happen without understanding how climate stresses exacerbate conflict risks. All climate related programming needs a deep understanding of those conflict dynamics and risks and often understanding local dynamics, governance, politics are also crucial to ensuring that funds reach the people who need it the most. That's why it's clear to us that it's impossible to treat climate fragility and conflict on two separate tracks.